last week on The Choice. Self-guided, Joe and I. That's the scary part. I never thought of that before I left. Welcome to this week's choice. And like we said last week, this is the second part of the do-it-yourself right. Renfro's Alaskan Adventures Moose Hunt. That's right. With Z and Joe. That's right. And last week, Z got his bowl. Z waylaid, man. His I mean, my went, gosh. reached out and touched him. And honestly, it wasn't that far of a shot. No, it really wasn't. But this week, Joe's up. This week's lucky logo is Caldwell, yes. though. Caldwell, lead so sled. Look for Keep the it Caldwell stable. logo. Keep it accurate. That's what Caldwell will do. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you what. At the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do. When you find that I'll lucky logo. I'll tell her what to do. <laughs> Anyways, I think we should just get going. Let's see it. It is okay. Joe's turn. Let's see what happens. We was going to put down a great moose about four or five days ago. It took us that long to get him out of the woods. <laughs> so we're sitting on a uh, top of a ridge. It's almost a saddle that connects a couple different valleys. <clears throat> we can't see the one behind us. It's just there's no way to see it all at one time. But our camp is about... Um, over a quarter mile to the southwest. The weather's changed a lot since we first got here. When we first got here, we were sweating to death and uh, bugs were eating us alive. And we haven't even been there here that long, but maybe seven days. And uh, But as you can see across on the peaks, we've got a lot of snow already. This whole valley was covered in snow yesterday morning. By afternoon, it all melted off the valley, stayed on the peak. And you can see this this valley all the way through here. There's a saddle along here. And when the conditions are right, we want to try and call this valley, but it's so windy today, we're just going to sit up in glass and see if we can see anything moving. If we can find a bull moving, we might try and move in on him, depending on where he's at and what time it is. Look at this mess we're making tonight. Well, we had some noodles that busted open in the bottom of the container, so we figured we better use those before they go bad. And then we ground up, or we got a pound of ground burger we fried up and threw in there. Then there was some sloppy joe mix with no other just the seasonings, but no tomato paste or anything like that to make sloppy joes, so we just threw that in there. Threw some onion in there, some onion, dried onion, some garlic powder, or no, onion powder, and a big old chunk of cheese to make that mess. We've been in and out of this valley about eight times because of this bull, trying to get him out, and uh, we'll kind of leave that alone for a day here and uh, try and go north and see what we can do. And, uh, Grab the TC and we're gonna rock and roll. What we've got is a saddle ridge here between two valleys. And Z and I have been glassing these valleys, but we're uh, trying to call any of these bull moose up with a cow call out of these valleys onto the saddle. That's the plan, as self-guided hunters would go. And if we can get a bull, catch a bull coming through, we think we might be able to get him to come over. <laughs> self-guided you gotta call even if you haven't called before hopefully that sounds like a cow in the heat not a dying cow <laughs> we're gonna sit up on this ridge now and glass both these valleys and see if any of these bulls that might be responsive to the sick thing I just made so see yeah he stopped Who's coming? We just called the bull out of this valley. You know, we lost him right up here. We're not sure where he's at now. Go away, because when we come back, 150 yards and close the distance with their TC. You see that thing that's raking on the tree? Yeah. Yeah. That thing? That was a moose. It was a moose. <sighs> wow. Don't go. Mm. Look. 
Welcome back. Anticipation killing you? Ouch. This has been a lot of great moose footage. This, I mean, is, this is unbelievable. These, this... these two shows are awesome. And now it's Joe's turn. That bull when we left for commercial was 150, 150 yards. yards. So let's see what happens. His TC could reach out way over that, but... We'll see what happens. Hmm. decided we'd sit on his saddle and try and call these two valleys and uh we're sitting we did that and we're sitting on the ridge watching and i saw we saw this bull moose and then i jumped up like two kids in a candy store <laughs> we got a bull coming we worked this bull all the way up this valley uh about 180 yards that way we come down into this point to get a good clearing shot i shot him in bow range i could have killed him with my hoi Jesus, son of thanks, man. Don't go anywhere, oh. Joe. Way to go, buddy. Wow. Wow, you and Z, two bulls down on a do-it-yourself so. moose hunt with Roy Renfro. It don't get any better. When we come back, we're going to get our hands on that bull. Don't go nowhere. You are? They are. I'm not there. You said you. Did you not say you? Welcome back to The Choice. You know, we just witnessed what it takes to do a do-it-yourself hunt, and the guys did a phenomenal job. And now they're going to walk up. Joe's going to get his hands on his big Alaskan moose. Unbelievable, huh? We're proud of you guys. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. 
Oh, what a beautiful animal. Alaska, self-guided, and Z and I shot two moose. That's awesome. Horses, I can't even tell you how I feel. That was cool. I'll tell you what, the experience of coming on a self-guided Alaskan moose hunt is far beyond you can imagine. Zendel killed one the other day. We had his bedded, we went down, got right in his bedroom, raked him out. This one we decided, because we haven't found another one by spot, and we came down in this saddle, started uh, calling through this saddle in the both, both sides and pulled him up to us. We think this is probably a little bit younger bull than Zendel's, but uh, he was aggressive. Look at this. He is tore up. Look up here, right in here, this is all tore up. The, this paddle is cracked all the way across the back. He's got scars on his side. Uh, he's missing hair on his neck. I'm giddy right now, but we still gotta hike this back to camp too. We should be less than a mile, and it's not all uphill like Zendel's was. <laughs> so we're, we're stoked. Good morning, Felicia, how are you today? Can you hear me okay? Okay, this is Joe and Zendel. Good, we've been trying to get a hold of Wade here. We uh, had no signal last night. If you could try and get him the message that uh, we do have another bull down and we're gonna have, we should have it up this afternoon. Gonna strap it in the rest of the way in. He should be good and snug. All we got left to pull out now is a head and the horns. And uh, Zendel and I, our moose hunt is done. Back at camp. Ooh. Our moose hunting is over. We had so much fun, even though the hunt was short and the packing was long. This hunt isn't about the actual kill, it's about this experience. When you're going out in a wilderness type hunt, a wilderness situation, you wanna make sure you have the right gear with you for survival. You can depend on your guide in a guided situation, but if something happens to your guide, you still wanna have some gear to protect yourself. Zendel and I, completely unguided, we wanted to make sure we had our first aid kit. Security, our safety blankets and things like that, the heat blankets. Also sutures to give you by more than just a couple hours. It might be days in the bush before anybody comes in and gets you. You wanna have your fire starter, your locator whistle, your compass and your GPS. GPS is great, but you gotta know how to use your compass in case the batteries die on it. And having a personal locator beacon is something that is actually really well too. They're only about four or 500 bucks and in an absolute death type situation, creates a beacon that can get out there and tell people search and rescue where you're at and you need help. And they'll get in as soon as they can. Some of this stuff requires batteries. So we also try to bring a, a solar charger in these remote wilderness hunts to keep everything charged. And with that, having this kind of gear in the bush with you, if you ever have to have a survival situation, you have to live through it, this can help you do it. We weren't for sure we were coming out today. He had to come get our meat and we're both killed out. And uh, he said he's got, uh, he'd like to try and get us out today too. So we're flailing about trying to pack everything up here. Ken, one of uh, Wade's guides, flies in in this Piper Cub, lands it like a champ, and we've been told you can't get a lot of weight on these Piper Cubs, and, and Ken was just piling the meat into the sink. I think we took about three plane trips in and out to get things taken care of. And when he took off off that mountain, that plane didn't take off. It actually fell down in the valley and swooped back up to head off to Russian Mission. And when he came back, Z and I had two monster racks laying there, and they're not gonna fit in this Piper Cub. So Ken grabs the lash and straps from under the seat and we start tying these things to the wing. When I got in the plane and took off, I said to him, I said, Ken, how long have you been a pilot? And he goes, not a pilot, I'm a mechanic. So as I look down in the valley of the Alaskan tundra wilderness, I'm thinking, great. He said, no, I'm just kidding you. I've been flying for a long time. If you want a true adventure, you go to Renfro's and you're gonna find it up there in the Alaskan wilderness. Don't go anywhere, because the guys did a phenomenal job, but, well, we're going to show you another adventure in Alaska, one of Wade's specialties, and it's actually Wade doing the hunting. That's right, brown Alaskan bear. Alaskan brown bear. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the choice. Now, like we said earlier, brown bear, Wade Renfro, lots of action, big gun. Big bear. Huge bear. Har. And this is the first ever brown bear hunt here in Alaska. We're gonna glass this creek for a while and see if we see anything. And if not, we're gonna walk across the ridge and start glassing on the main river. Keep watching. All right, well, we got the bears wounded in the brush right over here. We're gonna give him a little bit longer, obviously. Let him hopefully die. I think I hit him a little far back on the first shot. Second shot, I think I broke his front shoulder as he was going in. I don't think he's gonna go anywhere, but he's definitely still alive. We're watching, he's only about, oh, 90 yards over there and the brush keeps moving, so. We're gonna wait him out. All right, well, we're gonna walk down there and take a look and see if we can find him. I think he's still laying in that patch of brush right there. We haven't seen it move for a while, so we're gonna sneak in there and take a peek. All right, he's done. Well, it's day one of the hunt. We uh, set up on the ridge this morning for a little while. It was raining pretty hard. Couldn't see, decided to walk down here closer to the creek and uh, sat down right across from us. And uh, just after we sat down, this guy here showed up, walked out in front of us, had a quick 80 yard shot, and uh, it all happened pretty fast. It's a quick, fun hunt. Was that incredible or what? What a two-part series. And for us to be able, for the guys to capture that, yeah, you know, on a do-it-yourself. Yeah, for Joe and for doing that, that was amazing with all and, the footage they got. I mean, that's what it's all about. Then to have the bonus of Wade shoot his bear on camera. Yeah. Jason did a good job filming that too. The, I mean, we had awesome footage for those two shows. That was wow, it great. Rocked. Thanks, yeah, guys. If you happen that's... to see the Lucky Logo. Yep. It was called Caldwell. Caldwell, baby. You need to log on to thechoicetv.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win some great stuff from and Caldwell. And they load you up with stuff from Caldwell. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Now, okay. next week's show, we're going back up north to Quebec, to the Deer Hunters Fantasy Island, Anticosti. That's right. Yes. That's cool. That's cool. All righty. Well, hey. Thanks for making your choice. The choice. We'll see you next week. Anticosti. Deer Hunters Fantasy Island. You know what though? You know what the guys liked about going to Anacostia after hmm. Alaska? What? It was way easier to pack out those deer. Oh yeah, a lot easier. Way.